Welcome to Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Virtual Church. My name is Rosemary and I serve this church as a member of the Religious Services Committee. I am glad we can get together through this pre-recorded virtual service, even though we cannot physically get together. Today we welcome our guest, Aaron Kappener. Aaron is a small business owner in Kingsport. He helps lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer plus LGBTQ plus businesses with their online presence with social media, websites, and content creation. He also runs a YouTube channel in which he both educates people on what it's like to be trans in today's society and also helps others navigate their own journey to authenticity. I might hear my child. I won't go anywhere. You're in the palm of my hand. My arms are wrapped around you. When you sleep, I'll watch over you. I'll take care of your loved ones. Your future is in my hands. I forgive you. I'm your friend. Greetings. I'm the Reverend Manish Mishra Marzetti, serving as Senior Minister of the First Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'm also an openly gay pastor and a dad in a multiracial family. These pandemic days that we have been navigating have really forced me, and perhaps you as well, to think deeply and well about the things that are in our circle of care. What are we bringing our attention and love to? What are we allowing in that circle of care? For me, it is an increasing awareness of how we as a human family have really deeply otherized one another and created divisions that are ultimately harming us collectively creating harm on a large scale through the, through, the, through the disconnecting from one another, through the blaming of one another, through the invective that we are labeling at one another. Now, this is not to say that there are not behaviors, forms of oppression that are atrocious, and those things do exist. But we have work to do ourselves within our houses of worship, within the local communities that we've chosen to belong to, to look carefully at how we are bringing alive our ethic, our commitment to love and care as, as every denomination, every religious flavor that we can, can look toward calls us to do, to live into love and compassion and care for one another. Now, the times we're in, you know as well as I do, trying to universally bring that alive everywhere that, that may be too lofty of a goal in these times. But certainly, certainly in the communities we've chosen to belong to, we've chosen to be there for good reason. We've had found resonance. We have found ethics and an approach that, that deeply resonates with us, spiritual values that speak to who we are. Those are the places to, to begin. Those are the places to begin looking at, huh, what does inclusivity look like here? Who isn't a part of my community but living nearby? I wonder why. I wonder why some folks don't choose to be a part of our community and choose to be parts of other communities. How can we, whoever that we is, whatever group, community it might be, 
how can we expand beyond who we are today to live more deeply into open heartedness and love and care? How can we build sustained ongoing relationships across difference? Here too, we can get caught up in trying to do the, the pie in the sky, the hardest thing first. How do we even just build up relationship, ongoing sustained relationship with other like-minded communities or groups or people that are committed to the same types of transformation and growth, embodiment of spiritual goodness, good-heartedness that we ourselves are healing the, the divisions across the globe or in our nation as a whole might be a very grand ideal that we continue to strive towards and we should not lose our commitment to, to build better right where we are, right wherever our feet find us, whichever communities and groups we're moving within. The intersection of LGBTQIA+, the longing in, in that alphabet of communities to live into the fullness of dignity, equality, justice. That longing echoed in other communities throughout our nation, black communities, Latinx communities, many other communities, often intersecting as people holding a multiplicity of identities find their way into our lives and into our local houses of worship. How do we honor that multiplicity of experience without trying to change the other person? How do we honor ourselves across difference, stepping into true authenticity, integrity, and inclusiveness? It begins with each and every one of us striving to be that presence, encouraging and inviting others close to us within group or community to live into the same be the transformation our culture, our society, our world needs. It rests with each and every one of us to do what we can right where we are. For our prelude this morning, enjoy the piece, What Shall We Sing? written by Gary McConnell. The performance was recorded during a past in-person service.
loving kindness next. Please hold a light within your heart to dispel the darkness and shine a light for all those whose right to exist as their full and true self is denied. doing today? First, I want to say thank you to Rosemary and the staff at Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Church for inviting me to share my testimony and a few words in honor of Pride Month in order to shine a light on the LGBT community. I was happy to make this video to participate in this virtual service, uh, which I think is a great resource, you know, for those of us who miss services and fellowship. First off, right, who the heck is this guy? I'm Aaron Kapener. I'm turning 25 in a few days, and I have a, a small business here in Kingsport, Tennessee. I help LGBTQ plus businesses with their online social presence, social media, websites, content creation, and I also run a YouTube channel where I educate people on what it's like to be trans in today's society, but also help those who are like me navigate their own journey to their authenticity. So. That brings me to kind of what God has put on my heart to shine a light on today. Um, over the last few weeks, I've had multiple signs pointing me to, you know, sit down and do this video. Um, this one's a big for me because I've, I've grown up in the church. I have a very complicated experience with the church, um, as many LGBTQ plus people rightfully do. Um, and an emotionally heavy relationship with God is how I, is how I would describe my relationship with Him. Um, I've had subscribers that would love to see a video about being trans and Christian, um, how I was able to reconcile my faith with my gender identity and still identify as a Christian. I'd like to preface my answer with the fact that these are my opinions, right? I'm not someone who shoves my religion in other people. Um, your religion with God or your relationship with God or that like lack thereof, uh, isn't my business. It's between you and him, in my opinion. I'm very passionate about what I believe and uh, why I believe what I do, um, but I do not believe that you're less than me or going straight to hell if your feelings are different than mine. I love you for you, and that's my job here on earth, in my opinion. So to be sure I answer the question, first and foremost, I can reconcile my faith because for me, facing God is no longer like a battle of intense emotion that I can't even process, right? Um, when I saw people praising God or being religious, it made me so angry because I saw firsthand the judgmental people that can be in the church. And I didn't want anything to do with that picture that they had painted of a Christian, right? Uh, for me, my relationship with God is about what he did for me in my life where he bailed me out, you know, as a young child and helped me rise through the ashes of trauma. Um, in my opinion, I didn't have the strength to stand up from that and to survive my testimony without him. You know, I believe that in every step, hurdle, hill, mountain, and hurricane that I went through in my childhood, God was with me. I believe that. I believe he strategically placed people um, to guide me through all of that and give me emotional lift that reminded me and left me knowing that this was not going to last forever. Um, so my relationship with God is much like someone uh, would have with a parent or a grandparent, but also like a best friend. I talk to God um, just like I would talk to a friend or an elder, you know, real authentically. Christianity is literally defined as the religion based on the person and the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. And I follow Jesus, the red words of the Bible, and I believe he is inside of me. And um, I aspire to be more like him every day, to be better every day. If you ask me how I reconciled my faith, I would just, I would, I would be lying to you if I just said I worked through it and got it done and focused and, but because when I was less than six years old, he began res rescuing me. Um, so our relationship began early on in my life. 
um, as I got older and adverse childhood experiences, you know, slowly begin processing and showing up different times in my life in different situations. And honestly, my memory of my childhood is really fragmented, but I can tell you what I went through and I can tell you who was with me that helped me through each and every one of those single hard times. The biggest test for me was middle school by far. My relationship with God throughout my middle school years was absolutely treacherous. I mean, I was trying my best to follow like all these rules that had been laid out for me um, in the Bible I had known and I had learned in my childhood um, years, but it was it was different this time. You know, the Bible was terrifying in my susceptible preteen eyes. You know, I, I was scared to be who I was or even hold hands in fear of God's wrath. Um, I would write F-R-O-G on my wrist um, and whenever I felt myself thinking of any any girl in that way, I would just pray and just pray that he would make me stop feeling these things. Um, God thought brought me through a lot growing, growing up and this bond and this peace that I had learned uh, to grow with as a child was my saving grace in middle school. I, I knew that he had to have loved me uh, for helping me get to where I am now and after be after beating myself up for years, um, I realized God wouldn't want me to hate myself anymore. He would not want me to constantly be putting myself down and feeling like I was going to hell no matter what I did. And in the church, I was told I couldn't return to church camp because I was a bad influence on the other kids because of my refusal to repent. You know, between this and the exhaustion of damaged relationships with judgmental members of the church, I decided to just praise him in my own way. I didn't want it to be about who is praising the loudest or the hardest or dancing or whose hands were raised in the highest in the air. I mean, it wasn't about how often you read your Bible, how many hours you put in a day. Um, I wasn't about the public display. My relationship with God is between me and nobody else. And the same goes for you. And these are for a few reasons. One, we've been through a lot together. He's seen every single tear, heartbreak that no one else saw, crying, real intimate moments. I mean, think about that in your own life, like the hardest times that you faced, he was there for you. I mean, you may not have felt it, you may have felt alone and despairing and just so sad, but the whole time he was there. You know, and, and like secondly, I he calmed me through my trauma, hysteria, many years of mania, after years of relying on him to calm me in the storm, you begin to develop a relationship with this feeling of peace inside you, you know, and that's known as the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, I find it comforting knowing that he knew who I was. He knew who I would be today from the time that I was just a seed, you know, and I just, I know God loves me. God has been the only person who has not abandoned me even when I couldn't see myself getting to 18 and having a life of my own. He could. He could see that for me. He held me and picked me back up and brushed me off my brushed off my knees and was like, all right, let's keep going. It reminds me of Judah Smith in a new song. He's talking about how, you know, God speaks to us and he's saying, I'm right here, my child. I won't go anywhere. You're in the palm of my hand. My arms are wrapped around you. When you sleep, I'll watch over you. I'll take care of your loved ones. Your future is in my hands. I forgive you. I'm your friend. It'll be all right. Reconciling your faith is realizing that most people are breaking a commandment by constantly ridiculing you. Even without realizing it, they preach with hearts full of vain and attempt to try and speak for God. You may stand for the Bible in a specifically translated version of the verse, but you do not get to ass verbally assault people with your belief of any topic. Foolish people are using God's name to justify their own prejudices and their hatred for other people. And the sad part is that there are loving, compassionate, LGBTQ plus friendly, Christians and, and they're being overshadowed by these terrible acts of hatred. The true meaning of the Lord's name in vain is using the Bible to beat up other people. In some cases, it drives, drives people to murder. I mean, it's sad too because the Bible shouldn't be weaponized. It should be used to find inspiration and unconditional love and strength and all of which are strong emotions that we as lesbian, gay, bisexual, 
transgender, non-binary people, we're not used to being able to find unconditional love or peace or strength or inspiration from those around us. At least not in the capacity that God's love can do. Now, I don't want, ever want to be associated with the Jesus that hates gays. My Jesus doesn't hate. My Jesus doesn't spew hateful things. My Jesus doesn't judge other people based on the color of their skin. That he made them, I believe they, he made them perfectly colored in his image. I believe, you know, I, I believe that the Bible can be a pathway to learn more about God and his power and his love. It wasn't an easy process and there's still aspects of my faith and I'm still working on. But no one's ever done trying to be better. I pray I'll never be satisfied with who I am because I know I can always do better. I aspire to grow closer to the Lord and have him use me as a vessel in any way that I can be of use. I don't know what he's got planned for me in any way. I learned a long time ago that my cards are not in my hands, they were in his, they're in his hands, and when they're in his hands, I never lose. If you're watching this video right now, I want you to know that you're loved. I hope that you are all having a wonderful day, and please remember that you're beautifully and wonderfully made. I want to leave you with one remaining thought. God loves you. God loves you for who you are. Keep him close. Talk with him. Because at the end of the day, there's absolutely nothing that can separate you from his unconditional love. Love cannot be bought or sold. It does not make a profit. Love does not hide from truth. Love dives deep. Love takes on flesh. Love is queer. Love is platonic. Love is erotic. Love is asexual. Love confronts evil. Love delights in pleasure. Love touches and weeps and flirts and feeds and creates. Love is risky. Love challenges systemic evil in all its forms. Love is simple, but not easy. Love is collective. Love rises up. Love apologizes. Love believes. Love corrects. Love holds accountable. Love pays reparations. Love heals. Love tells its story. Love embraces everyone, every creature, every creation. It knows us intimately. It holds us collectively. Love transcends every boundary that seeks to confine it. It will not tolerate violence in its name. It does no harm. It only sets free. We extinguish this flame but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of love and justice, taking it outside these walls to the world we live in until we are together again. My name is Laura Husser, and I'm happy that we can be together today. Thank you for joining us, and please come back whenever you like. Please remember that our services are recorded in advance so sometimes events move forward without us. However, you can find up-to-date information on local events, social justice issues, inspiration, and content for all ages on our Facebook page. The postlude is We Can Love, 
written by Wendy Hurl and recorded by Chameleon Red. This song, as well as our prelude, help ring the bell of equity. Both this and our prelude pieces were written by Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist congregants. We are so grateful for their powerful songs and their gifts of music. As you make your way through the week, remember these words. Here may you know that you are lovable and that indeed you are loved. And may you carry that love out into the world as a blessing.